In this video, I'm going to talk about a procedure to test the difference between two dependent or two related means that is typically more powerful than the paired sample t-test. I discovered this method in a paper by Hedberg and Ayers, 2015, entitled The Power of a Paired T-Test with a Covariate. It's a little bit of a misleading title. It's not quite intuitively consistent with the procedure. So let me show you what this procedure is. It's actually not very difficult. So what you have to do is you, in a typical paired sample t-test case, you've got time one, time two data, for example. And I need to calculate the difference between these scores. So time two and time one, you have to go in that direction. So time two, uh, diff time two minus time one gives me the different scores that I need. And now I need to center the time one variable because I'm going to use this time one variable in a regression to get the intercept. And this, is, this test is based on testing the intercept for statistical significance. Now bear with me as I show this procedure. It'll start to make sense in a minute. So I need to center this. And bef in order to center it, I need to get the mean for the time one variable, which is going to be an x variable in a regression in a second. So I put this variable, time one, into this box here. And I ask for the mean, because I'm going to subtract that value from all of the, all of the other cases, so 50.4. And I go over here and transform. And I'm just going to call it uh, time one centered, time one centered, and time one minus 50.4, was it 0? I think it was 0 0.40. Let me just check that for sure. I'll click OK. Yes, it was 50.40. And so now I've got the, the centered variable, time centered, or I should have said time 1 centered. So let me just fix that up. Time 1 centered. And now I just need to run a bivariate regression by regressing time one, or I should say the different score onto time one. And this is the actual paired sample t-test supplement, if you will. So go into regression linear, and I've got my difference variable here, and time one centered, and click OK. Here we go, we've got the constant, which is the intercept. And this analysis is based on the intercept and it's 6.50 and it's got a t value of 2.478 uh, 2 and p equal 0 0.038. It's statistically significant. Now for those of you who know about regression you'll know that the intercept is the value of y when x is 0 and in this case with time 1 equal to 0 time 2 is equal to 6.5 which is a value that's higher than time 1. This implies that the time 2 mean is larger than the time 1 mean. And it's also implying that it's statistically significantly larger based on this p-value of 0 0.038. Now let's check this out with a, a conventional paired sample t-test. Analyze, compare means, paired sample t-test, time 1 into the variable 1 box, and time 2 into variable 2, click OK, and here I've got the difference between the means of negative 0 0.650 and I've got a t-value of negative 2.216 and the p-value is 0 0.054. So the p-value in this case is suggesting a non-significant difference but in the regression paired sample t-test approach the effect is statistically significant and the difference is equal to 6.50. That's the difference between the means, and this is the difference between the means. The main difference is the standard error is larger in the paired sample t-test, 2.934, whereas the standard error for the intercept is 2.624. That is the difference between these two tests. The standard error is smaller, which typically will make the regression-based t-test more statistically powerful than the paired sample t-test. Uh, so if you want to learn more about uh, this procedure, I invite you to read the 
Hedberg uh, paper where he talks about statistical power and he describes conditions under which the regression t-test approach might be expected to be more powerful than the paired sample t-test. I would say that in most cases it will be more powerful. Now something that Hedberg doesn't talk about a lot in this paper is type 1 error rates. I don't know uh, the degree to which uh, there's an easy way to describe when the regression t-test approach is going to be inflating your your alpha rate beyond 0 0.05 but my impression is that it actually does keep it pretty close to 0 0.05 uh, there might be some exceptions in that case so this is a method to test the difference between two related means that is based on a regression approach and the intercept taking advantage of the smaller standard error I hope you enjoyed that video and I'll catch you next time